Hello! In this video I will show you how to configure the M8731 audio codec and output some music through it. Here I am using Teresic D10 standard development board, but this tutorial can be applied to any other development platform with minimal changes. First we will configure the codec through the ISCIC interface, which is connected to the FPGA fabric. Once the codec is configured and ready, we will feed digitized music to its audio data interface to demonstrate its functionality. So, the first task is to create a simple ISCIC interface using VHDL. The ISCIC interface requires two signals, one for clock and another one for data. In the idle state, both signals are kept high. The start condition is generated by pulling the data line low, while the clock line is still high. Next, the master, in our case the FPGA, sends an address of the device it wants to talk to. After a 7-bit address and the read-write bit are sent, the master releases a data line. The data line has a pull-up resistor which pulls the line high while its state is not actively controlled. If an I2C device receives its address, it pulls the data line low at the next clock cycle. Such event is called acknowledge. Next, we send two bytes of data. Each byte is followed by an acknowledge event. After the last acknowledge, the data transmission is completed with a stop condition. A stop condition is generated by pulling the clock line high while the data line is kept low. The audio codec interface is hexadecimal 34. Next, the device will expect 16 bits of data. The first 7 bits are a register address we want to access. The following 9 bits are written into the corresponding register. Please see the official device datasheet to learn more about the register's functions. It's also important to note that the data line should only change while the clock line is low, and the acknowledge condition is checked while the clock line is high. In this tutorial, we will configure the M8731 as follows. The device will operate in slave mode, USB mode with 12 MHz main clock, 48 kilo samples per second at 16-bit resolution, and PCM mode audio interface. In the slave mode, the FPGA will provide all necessary signals, such as main clock, interface clock, duct synchronization, and actual audio data. The PCM audio interface works the following way. First, the duck synchronization signal indicates the start of a new sample with the selected sample depth, in our case 16-bit. On the next rising edge of the interface clock, we start to send a sample for the right and the left audio channels. This event will happen 48,000 times per second. Here is the architecture of my project. It contains I2C component, interface component, on-chip memory, which will store an audio sample, and the main architecture. Alright, let's take a look at the VHDL code. Here is the I2C component. Its core is a state machine, which takes care of start and stop conditions, data transmission and acknowledge event. Here we generate the I2C clock from 50 MHz reference clock. And here we create events for data transmission while the I2C clock is low and acknowledge events while the I2C clock is high. Initially the state machine is waiting in the idle state for the transmission flag. Once it's received, it generates the start condition and sends the 8-bit I2C address. After 8 bits are transmitted, the data line is released and the state machine checks for an acknowledge event. Next, it sends first data byte, 
gets acknowledge, sends second data byte, gets acknowledge again, and eventually generates a stop condition. After a data transmission is complete, the state machine goes back to its idle state. This is the PCM audio interface component. It receives the reference clock of 12 MHz and generates the selected sample rate of 48 kilo samples per second. First, it sends a synchronization signal, and from the next rising edge, it starts a sample transmission for left and right channels. The QSIS builder contains the PLL, which generates 12 MHz clock, and the on-chip memory for audio storage. Here you can configure the memory size, width, and set the initialization file. We will talk about it a bit later. This is the main architecture, where we declare and initialize discussed components. In this tutorial, I am using the on-chip memory to store a 30 second long audio sample. To fit a 30 second audio on this PGA memory, I will reduce the sample rate to 8 kilo samples per second. Moreover, I am using the mono audio format, so both channels receive same data. So, 30 second audio takes around 4 megabit of memory. In this part you can manually configure the audio codec over the I2C interface. Now, when everything is ready, we need to create a memory initialization file, which will store some music. First, we have to convert the desired audio file into the 16-bit, mono, PCM wave format. The PCM data file has the following structure. The first part contains different information, such as bitrate, number of channels, file size, and so on. But we are only interested in the actual audio part, which starts after the data word and the audio size information. In order to extract audio, just open the desired file in an hex editor software and delete the undesired part. Next, the resulting binary file has to be converted into the memory initialization file, which has the illustrated structure. For this purpose, I wrote a simple MATLAB script, which converts any file into MIF. You can find it on my GitHub. Finally, go back to QSIS and set the correct memory size, and link the created MIF file. <laughs> 